Hallelujah. Shall we rise up to our feet? How are you all doing? Doing good? Are you ready to worship God? Yes. Amen. Wow, that's nice. Let's look unto God in prayer. God, we thank you, God, for this lovely morning that you have given us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the new blessings, anointing that you have kept already for us, O oh God, this day. Your word says, O oh God, your mercies are new every day. And God, we are dwelling in your mercies this morning. And we believe, Lord Jesus, that today we're going to see something amazing, O oh God, in your presence. God, we're going to receive something, Lord God, new in our lives today, O oh God. God, we welcome you. Come on, church. Raise your voices and praise him. Come on. God, we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your word says, oh God, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all the benefits that you have given us, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for that, oh God. Jesus, we welcome you in this place. Lord God, renew our minds, Lord Jesus. Touch our hearts today, oh God. Jesus, we pray, oh God, for every single newcomer that has come in this place will receive a new anointing from you and receive the truth that you are the one who's going to set him free, oh God. We want to thank you. We want to glorify you, God. Even as we sing and worship you, God, let your presence be in this place and fill our hearts, oh God. We want to thank you once again, God, for everything that you're doing in our lives and you're planning to do in our lives, God. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. lift your voices, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on, church. We're going to bless His name. Amen. Because He saved us, we are here to worship Him. Amen. Praises rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn. Oh, say. 
face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away when we see you when we see you we find strength to face the day in your presence
giver of my soul. You're the giver of every blessing. You're the giver of everything. Oh God, we will worship you, worship you, worship you, Lord. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Amen. He's blessed us so much. Amen. Turn to somebody beside you and tell them, I am blessed by God. Come on, go ahead. Woo! Come on, put your hands together. Here we go. Lord, you're more than enough for me. Lord, you're more than enough for me. Everybody you sing it out. Lord, you're more than enough for me. second chances so you may be thinking everything is over but remember God is beginning a new chapter in your life we thank you God no matter how many times we failed God he will never fail us he will never leave us his mercies are new every morning we're gonna sing of his worship we're gonna sing of his mercy and love this morning hallelujah thank you God thank you Jesus we worship you Lord Thousand times I've failed, so you're my. 
Transform us, Lord. We bless your name. My soul cries out to you, God. My soul cries out to you, Jesus. It is well with my so it is well with my soul it is well with my
rest well with my soul. My soul rests in you, God. My strength comes from you. It is well because Christ is my everything. It is well because Christ is my advocate. Christ is my Savior. Christ is my shepherd. My everything, my It is well, it is well with my soul. Father, thank you for this beautiful, this time of worshiping you. Thank you for you are with us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that strengthens us. Lord, speak to us through your word. Bless the rest of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless us. Put your hands together. Welcome, Pastor Krishanam. Then you may be seated. Praise the Lord. What an amazing time of worship. Amen. Our Lord is here with us. Do you believe that? Because the Bible says whenever two or more people have gathered in his name, he is there with us. Amen. We have been reading Psalms, so we will read Psalm 33 responsively. Shall we all rise to our feet? I will read the first, you will read the second, the last two we will do together. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He layeth up the depth in the storehouses. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thought of his heart to all generations. The Lord looketh from heaven, and he beholdeth all the sons of men. He fashioned their hearts alike, he considered all their works. An horse is a vain thing for safety, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Last two verses. For our hearts shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercies, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in thee. Amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this privilege to stand before you, to worship you, Lord, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Lord, as we stand here, I pray, Lord, that every one of our lives be blessed. For your plans and purposes is what we seek to accomplish in our life. And I pray, Lord, that you will enable us. Father, we pray the same prayer, Lord, for the people that have come here for the first time. Lord, we pray that you will speak the truth in their life and they will know the truth, Lord Jesus. Bless them, guide them, and lead them. Father, we pray for people that are traveling out of the city, Lord. Father, I pray that your journey mercies will remain with them and they will accomplish their desire for the travel, Lord. Father, we pray for people who are celebrating their birth 
birthdays and anniversaries. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful year that you're adding into their life. May every plan and purpose that you have kept for their life be accomplished by your strength in them, Lord. Bless them, guide them, and lead them. Bless the word that comes alive in our life today, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, it will bear fruit. It will draw us closer to you that we will become an image of you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for you are with us. Bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's welcome our dear pastor. Let's do the confessions together. Thank you. I believe in the Almighty God, our Father and Creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. I believe in God, the Holy Spirit. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today as I listen, I'm blessed, healed and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord bless us. This month, uh, we've called it the month of growth. We're believing God for growth, not only in our personal lives, but also in our spiritual lives. We were looking at a couple of things last uh, two weeks, and today we want to conclude on this topic with learning on the word loyalty. The word loyalty. It's not something that we hear too often in today's world. Loyalty is more of a mistake of character than a virtue in today's world. People say if you're loyal to anybody, anything, you're foolish. That's the way uh, today's world looks at the virtue of loyalty. But God is a loyal God. And God wants his children to be loyal children. 21 years I'm a pastor in this church. I've never preached on this topic. And I'm not saying it as a great thing. I'm just saying that somehow it never happened. And uh, since I'm preaching it for the first time, I gave it a lot of attention and kept asking myself if I'm going only by the Bible because I don't want to go by any other book when I stand behind the pulpit with the word of God. And so I want to bring to you the concept of loyalty from the Bible alone, not as a concept of suffering and surrender, but as a picture of growth and excellence. Because loyalty leads to success and victory. The kind of loyalty that is sometimes taught in Christianity is about, you know, when someone slaps you on one cheek, show the other. Well, somehow people have forgotten other commandments of Jesus. The other commandments of Jesus very clearly says, when someone comes to slap you, don't give a chance, run away. <laughs> Avoid that. You know, so there are, when, when you teach only one scripture, uh, you sort of misunderstand the concept because uh, you don't learn it in the fullness of what the Bible is saying. And, and especially a media uh, which uses uh, occasions to speak on Christians, uh, have a way of taking a scripture out and assigning their own uh, interpretation to it. So the concept of loyalty, we're going to allow the Bible itself to define it for us, all right? Let the Bible explain to us what the Bible means by God's loyalty and how we ought to be loyal. One of the descriptions of loyalty the Bible gives us is a noble, unserving allegiance which is rooted in faith and love for God which binds the hearts of God's people together in a common continuum of purpose. So we need to be people who are loyal. Don't become disloyal, unloyal, illoyal, you know, whatever is the opposite of loyal. 
I really didn't check it because I, I didn't, usually when I pick up a message, I do a little bit of the homolytics of it, uh, not just the hermeneutics, but uh, in, in this message, I've just stuck to the Bible and I haven't done uh, 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 English of it or anything like that. So I'm just going to uh, come from the biblical perspective. The first thing is God wants us to be loyal to God. Now, when you study about loyalty, um, I was shocked to see that the word loyalty or loyal is not used in the King James Bible. The King James version of the English Bible doesn't have the word called loyal. That's pretty surprised. So uh, it's the, the root or the original Bible which is written, which was written in Greek and Hebrew, Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek and parts of it in Aramaic. So they have used the word loyal. But when the English translators, the scholars, they translated it into English, in the old English, they did not use the word loyal because somehow the word loyal is probably a more modern English and uh, the older English, they have used words like faithful and other synonyms. So I was searching for loyal and uh, I think the new King James Version uses the word loyal which is, uh, they have taken the King James Version and uh, the, because English is a living language, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, thank you for that prompt response. Now, uh, th thank you. But if you, if you look at English as a living language, you find that meanings of the words change, you know. Uh, having said that, the word loyal comes in the New King James. Let's read that together. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is? Aha. Uh -huh. So in, in this you have done foolishly. God is speaking to another king of Israel. So we leave that part. Let's, let's go back to the first portion. Yeah. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. So God is looking. The eyes running to and fro. God is looking throughout the earth. What is he looking for? Next page. To show himself strong. To show himself strong. Who does God want to show himself strong for? For the person whose heart is loyal to him. A lot of times we pray, but we are not loyal. A lot of times we have too much faith in God, but we are not loyal. And because a lot of our Christian facets are expressed minus loyalty, God is not allowed to work as he desires to work. If you buy a five liver lock and use only four liver key, lock won't open. Not because the four livers are wrong. Though the four livers are right, you need the fifth liver to open that lock. God works in wholesomeness. Loyalty is a requirement when we come to God. God honors loyalty. God is looking for loyalty. And whenever God sees loyalty, he'll show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. For all of you who wanted to clap, that was a nice clapping spot. But the Bible also comes to tell us loyalty towards God is an opportunity to God for God to reveal himself. God wants to reveal himself. Father and daughter were walking on the road. A father and daughter were walking on the road. Hey, you all like last Sunday's message very much, no? No? So many people were telling me. Today morning, no, one lady was standing in the queue for prayer. She comes to me. She says, thank you for preaching last Sunday. All pastors are equal. All your messages are good and all that introduction. But last Sunday's message changed my life. I just came to tell you that and she walked off. I think because a lot of people, she didn't want to take more time, but I think last Sunday's message has really helped people. No? I'll preach it again next Sunday. No, next, next year. Next year one Sunday. If, if the Lord gives me an inspiration, I'll do that again. Because there's more on that. See, problem is we have, what, 35, 40 minutes to preach. How to preach uh, eternal messages in 40 minutes? Uh, big problem. Let's see, we'll do a part two next year. So keep coming till next year at least. You know? <laughs> I'm joking. I know you all are loyal people. 
Okay. Father and daughter were walking together. I said, I, I remembered this because that lady was behaving like a daughter. You know, she was talking to me like talking to a father. She's older than me, but she looked older than me. <laughs> I saw a young lady with white streaks of hair. I think it's fashion now. I, I didn't want to ask her age because sometimes it's not appropriate, but I'm sure she was much younger than me and she had you know, white streaks of hair, hi pastor, how are you? And I just knew this was a young girl in her 20s and she had white hair. Anyway, we live, we live uh, in a world where people are not even loyal to themselves. And, uh, and I'll come to that. So the father and daughter were walking together on the road. This small girl in her uh, early 10s, you know, 11, 12 age, she saw a big tire, a uh, 10-wheeler, 12-wheeler lorry tire. She saw just the tire, the rubber tire on the road, which was vertical. It, someone can roll it off down the road. So she told her dad, dad, do you think I can push that? Do you think I can roll it? Dad said, of course you can. Just use all your strength, okay? So she runs up to the tire on the other side of the road and pushes. Comes back saying, dad, it didn't work. He says, use all your strength and it will roll. This happens three, four times I think in the fifth or sixth time, she comes back to her dad and says, Dad, look at my hands. They're so black and dirty. I pushed and pushed and it won't move. I used all my strength. Dad says, no, you didn't use all your strength. The problem is when I tell you use all your strength, you haven't understood I'm a part of your strength. You've forgotten. I, I'm a part of your strength. And... And the greatest strength of you, which is me, is standing here. You haven't used me. Use all your strength. That's exactly what God is saying. Show me a loyal heart and I'll show you what your strength is. Because I am in you. I am with you. Give God a big thanks and say, thank you, Lord. You are my greatest strength. Hallelujah. 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 We are not alone. God is our strength. And when he's our strength, the mistake we make is we don't use all his strength. We just rely on our own strength and we get results of the kind we can get. But when we start to rely on his strength, we begin to see the results which he can give us. And one of the great ways of doing it is to be loyal to God Almighty. Loyalty, which is a missing virtue in today's world. God wants us to be loyal people. God's nature he was always there. God never began. God always existed. God always is and God always will remain. He's an almighty God. There's nothing he doesn't know. And he's everywhere, no matter where you are. He's everywhere. You know, some, and God knows everything. Sometimes we feel that uh, if faith is there, that's enough. I want to tell you something. Faith is so important but loyalty is like a bedrock. You can't have a house without walls and a roof. But walls and roof is meaningless if there is no foundation. Loyalty, sincerity, a fertile spirit, you know, all of these things are like the bedrocks of character, foundations of character that God wants us to have. They are something that is so much of our attitude than our action. They reflect in our action through our faith, through our words, but they are so much a part of our foundation of life. God wants us to be loyal people and primarily loyal to God. I'm thinking of that story when the children of Israel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they were in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar gave them a choice. If you don't worship the God that I have set up, you're going to be killed. You have a choice. You can worship my God and live or you can worship your God and die. So what he did, he set up a huge pyre of fire. There was a huge fire that was set up that was pretty hot. They put chemicals that made the fire hotter, you know. And so it was bad. And they told these three boys, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, we're going to throw you into the fire 
if you don't worship our God at the time that we command. These three boys looked at the king and said exactly this. Oh king, don't waste your time. We will not worship your God. Now look at the next line. They say this. Our God is able to deliver us. But we don't know if he will deliver us. That's crazy. When I pray for people to be healed, I pray with total faith that they're going to be healed. I mean, why is it Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? Why don't you have the faith that you will come out alive? They say, we don't know. Maybe God wants us to die in that fire. We don't know God's plan. One thing we know, even if we don't have the faith for deliverance, we have the loyalty to God Almighty. We will not worship. We will not bow down to the gods that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has set up. Sure enough, they were thrown into the fire. You see, our God is everywhere. Our God is in the future. Our God is in the problem that is yet to come. But God doesn't reveal himself everywhere. There is no place God is not. In fact, the Bible says, Psalmist David sang, God, even if I go to the uttermost parts of the earth, your presence is there. The all-knowing God is everywhere. God was already in the fire that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were going to be thrown into. But when three loyal hearts fell into the fire, God revealed himself. Nebuchadnezzar looked into the fire and said, we threw three people into the fire, but I see a fourth one among them. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. Hallelujah! The fourth one looks like the son of God. He stood up and he shouted, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, come out of the fire. And they walked out and their, you know, trousers and shirts and not a hair on their body had even the smell of fire on them and had no power on them. And they were so shocked. Who? Even Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were shocked. <laughs> because they've never seen Jesus. In fact, coming out of the fire was a displeasure for them because Jesus was in the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they came out and that lesson taught us one thing. It gives us one thing. Even sometimes when we don't have the faith, even sometimes when we don't have the confidence of what God may do, if we have loyalty to who God is, God will reveal his greatness and power. Amen. Many times we have faith in God, but we are not loyal to God. We compromise on things. We give up on his name. We make shortcuts for our life. We sort of, you know, uh, don't walk the dotted line just because we feel that probably there is no point. But God says, be a person of loyalty. Daniel was in the same situation. When Daniel was told, you're going to be thrown into the lion's den. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, he went up into the room and prayed as usual. Why did he pray as usual? Probably he never thought he's going to come out alive. He thought it's all over, but he decided to be loyal to God. He never knew God will shut the mouth of lions. Because never in the history of the Bible, lions have spared anybody. There are times anointed people went and attacked the lion. But if ever lions attack, they always killed people. There is no story in the Bible that Daniel could have referred to. See, today we have the advantage of reading Bible stories and believing God. They didn't have that advantage. They never heard of a story where a lion came and angels shut the mouth of the lion. Daniel never knew that could happen. So he just left it to God and said, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to be loyal to you. Maybe I'm the last meal for tonight in the mouth of the lion, but God, I'll still be faithful to you. And he put his life on the line. That night, God said, I'm not going to let you be the dinner for the lions. I'm going to make you a testimony in the presence of the lions. You know what? When you and I are loyal to God, Okay, guys, let's give it a big one to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. When we are loyal to our God, our God has a way of revealing himself. You look at a gardener. You look at a gardener. 
they garden, they do farming, look at the big, you know, five acres, ten acres, sometimes a hundred hectares of a large garden that, a farm that they develop, you've got all these fruits and it's beautiful. You look at them, how long they have been pouring water, sometimes months they are manuring and they are sort of bringing up, you know, uh, pruning the uh, uh, vegetation and the fruitful trees and they're kind of making it grow. You ask a farmer, three years, five years, you've been making those trees grow and there's no fruit. The farmer says, I'm not going to be tired. The gardener says, I'm not going to be depressed because when I continue to do my job at the right time, there is a season of fruitfulness and at the right season, it's going to bear fruit and everything I do is going to become worthwhile. When you stay faithful, when you stay loyal, sometimes you feel tired. Sometimes people laugh at you and say, there is no result. Well, just remember one thing. There is a time of fruitfulness. There is a season of fruitfulness. You just stand there and do what God's called you to do. At the right time, you're going to see at the right season, fruits are going to pop up and no one can stop it. Hallelujah. Amen. No one can stop your fruitfulness because it's coming at the right time. It's a question of loyalty. Acts chapter 5, there was a situation where the apostles were caught and beaten up badly. Peter and all of them beaten up badly and they were told, no more obeying Jesus. Obey what we say. And look at what they replied. Then Peter and the apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than the international day. Next one. You tell us, whom should we obey? God or men? Who should we obey? They said, we choose to obey God. One of the mistakes many people make is, instead of being loyal to God, they become loyal to people. Yes, you should be loyal to people, but then you, when, you, when you are loyal to God, be blind. Be mad. But when you are loyal to people, all your antenna should be up. You should, you should marry your loyalty to wisdom. And they should work together. The problem is when you are loyal to people and you are not wise, then you end up with a lot of destruction. And eventually what happens, you say, I'll not be loyal to anybody anymore. You have a hard heart. You have an angry and bitter heart. And then instead of being loyal to God, even with God, you become disloyal. And life goes down the drain and you keep asking questions like, I'm praying, but I don't see results. Well, that's precisely what the devil wants to do. He wants to confuse us. In fact, Psalms 101, the Bible says, God's eyes are looking for loyal people so that when he sees them, he'll put them in a place where they can serve him at a higher level of life. So God is looking for loyal hearts. But when we talk about loyalty, we must understand that we should also be loyal to God's family. Everybody say, God's family. We must be loyal to God's family. We... I told you this is the first time I'm preaching this message in this church. I never preached on loyalty. I have to say this. It, when I grew up in my Christian faith, I'm still growing, but uh, when I use the words like when I was growing, I'm talking about my childhood, you know, when I was eight, ten, all of at that, when I was eight years of age, ten years of age, sort of. Uh, in those days, I would, in different churches, my dad would move different churches because. Uh, he was in the Air Force and he would get transferred. So, you know, every time you get transferred, you go to a new church in the new city. So, I still remember a lot of these preachers who would come and who would preach would say things like, be faithful to me, be faithful to my church, otherwise God's going to curse you. You know, give your money faithfully. If you don't give your money faithfully, curse is going to come. Show me the money, how much you're giving. And, and I sometimes feel I need that anointing, but... Uh, in my personal life, I have chosen not to do that and I'll tell you why. Not because what they preached was wrong. I think what they preached was Bible based, it was correct. But the reason why I don't do it is this. When I prayed and, and, and I felt God calling me to be a pastor, I was about 21, I was about 20, 1920 when I felt God calling me to be a pastor. I wrestled with that for about uh, 
two or some more years. And finally, at the age of 21 point what, two, three, I decided, okay, I'm going to be a pastor. So I said, okay, God, let your will be done. Then I put an asterisk, you know, condition supply. So I said, God, one condition, I don't want any problem in my church. Because this is not my plan, it's your plan. I will not come without condition. I, you know, when, when there's a demand on you, you can put some conditions. You know what I'm saying? So I put conditions. I said, God, you have to give me a church without trouble. I want people who are... That's why some of you, even if you want to make trouble, you can't. <laughs> because I and God have a deal about you. When you come here, automatically you will support me. Because God is here. He knows I can't handle all this. I... I am inside, I am not that uh, rowdy type of person. <laughs> when I preach, I preach like that. But inside, I am a soft person. I, I, can't, I can't take those, it, it, it breaks me. I, I can't stand it. I don't mind if people who don't know Jesus uh, trouble me. That's all right. But people who are a part of the family, if, if they create trouble, it kind of put me off, you know. I need to be stronger on the inside. God knows that. So I have told God, God, I want a problem-free church, okay. Condition number one. Then I have other conditions too. So I, I put up all those conditions because I had conditions from God through my parents. One was God wanted to be a pastor, which I didn't like. Second was my parents didn't want me to marry a girl from my ministry. So that was a rude condition. And uh, so I told God, anyway, your conditions are there for me. So I also have some conditions, like I put conditions. So I said, your will be done, but my conditions apply. Then, in our church, I never preached about loyalty. I never preached, you have to be faithful to the church. You, uh, you have to be faithful to me. I never preached like that. The reason is, God's grace in this church, almost 100% of the people have been faithful to me. Have been faithful. See, another thing, I don't know what happens in the background. I only see people on Sunday or when I visit their house or something and they are top of the line. Best you can't find such good people anywhere else in the world. Yes. I think the best of the people comes out when they are in Bethel Eji Church. Something happens. I'm telling you, frankly. This is not an exaggeration. This is a fact I'm telling you. I'll tell you one story. One day, one Saturday, one lady called me. Girl. She called me and she said, Pastor, I'm scared. So I told her, don't be scared, tell me. No, I'm coming to church from so many years. You don't know me. I come from such and such a place. It's about 80 kilometers, 80 kilometers from Bangalore. I come from that village. Every Sunday I come to church. But now they were searching for a boy for my marriage. I had to reveal that I'm a believer. So they all are angry with you. Tomorrow morning they are coming to church to beat you. What should I do? Do I have to answer that? Don't you know you should just stop them somehow? And why should you ask me? But she was crying so much, so I didn't want to insult her or uh, hurt her. I told her, Ma, you don't worry, you just pray. Something will happen, don't worry. So she said, if nothing happens, tomorrow we are coming to church. It's another way of saying you're getting beaten up. So <laughs> that night I was praying, God, for once maybe you shouldn't allow someone to come to church, and, but let your will be done. And, I left it. I just knew God was in control. I didn't bother too much. A couple of times people have come to beat me, okay? One of them who came to beat me became a singer in our choir for some time. I always say, be careful. Because there is a God. Yeah. This girl calls me up and she says, tomorrow people are coming to beat you up. So I said, okay, don't worry, we'll pray. That night I prayed. Then next day, Sunday service, I came in the morning. And I was standing out. No, now we have the overflow section and all that there. So those days we had nothing there. It was just a plain ground. So I was just standing and I don't remember if any greeters were there at that time. I was just standing alone as people were walking in. Worship was going on. I was just wishing people, asking them to come. That time I saw in that lungi, no, or dhoti, whatever they call, the villagers with shirt and that uh, lungi type thing, they had come. So they don't know English. So... I met them, I smiled at them, I said, come inside. They don't know, they come to beat me. They don't know it's me. So, they were happy with me. I said, come be seated. I don't know that girl. I've not seen her, only phone call. 
that is the thing about faithful people when problem comes they'll say pastor we are coming to church from 10 years why you never met me till <laughs> that didn't meet but now we are coming from long time you know what i'm saying so anyway i don't know who she is she was sitting at the back i didn't know it was her so i told these people come and i made them sit at the back that the time we didn't have all this balcony and all so we were sitting at the back between them there was an understanding they had told her whenever the fellow comes on the stage okay you inform us we will go right on the stage and ask him why did you convert our daughter and uh, based on the answer we will see that time so they had come prepared to create chaos in the church when i got on the stage and she told that's the guy they said you keep quiet then i preached no one got up and uh, i was again and again looking at the back you know any movement is there <laughs> then after preaching those days i used to go and sit in the newcomers lounge we had a small room there not the present room and i went and sat there because i would meet all the newcomers these people came there and this girl was crying and she said pastor these are the people my family so i said yeah i know you only called me yesterday she's doing that don't talk because they don't know she called me yesterday so i said what is there to hide i already met them then i spoke to them in kannada and i prayed for them and they went they told her this boy is a good boy you want to come come here no problem and then they told me tell her to marry the person we say i told them don't talk like that let her marry the person god wants they said correct what you said is correct let her marry who god wants we have no objection and they went out so have i have have so many experiences in my life where people come with a wrong attitude something happens in the presence of god because god is a loyal god god is a faithful god give him a big 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 hand clap of thanks hallelujah our god is a loyal god our god is a faithful god no he is a god who will never let you down now we should also be loyal what god has his principles his word his commandments we should never let down his holy purpose in our life we must be loyal to god's family but god says be loyal and don't share my glory with idols you'll find that in isaiah chapter 42 verse 8 i am the lord that is my name and my glory i will not give to another neither my praise to the graven images so god says some of us who come and pray to jesus and then we pray to others also god says no be loyal if you are praying to me let me be your only god because i don't share my glory with others another portion in the book of psalm psalms uh, 50th psalm and the bible says in uh, uh, a portion there god says that look psalm 50 verse 16 those of you who are people who use my word and live a wrong life God says do not do like that because I will not share my glory with wickedness so when you are loyal to God we got to be loyal to God's glory and loyal to God's word and we don't mess up with that because God always returns that favor which you do to his name be loyal to God's family the people that God has placed in your life now that's where the question comes um okay that's that's where the topic of interpersonal relationships come be loyal to your parents be loyal to your children husband and wife be loyal to each other so the question come pastor my partner is cheating on me my partner is not faithful how long can i hold on how long can i be loyal well the answer is this your nature should be a loyal nature now if they are doing something which is way beyond which is acceptable even by the law of the land or by the law of god's word then of course you know it's a different question but otherwise your attitude should be a attitude of forgiveness and loyalty but that doesn't mean you have to be loyal to a company or a industry or a friendship that is so cheating you and abusing you no you don't have to be now many people have questions like okay i have to be loyal i understand but i'm in a company that doesn't respect me doesn't value me they don't allow me to grow now i got another opportunity can i leave answer is yes you can leave but you don't leave as a betrayer you don't leave as a carnal person you don't leave as a wicked person when you leave you leave as a child of god 
Yes, go for something better, but do not do it in a way which is intentionally to harm the people who've been bad against you. That is not the nature of loyalty. You've got to be loyal to yourself. Being loyal to yourself is different from being selfish. Selfish is when you are caring only for yourself. Loyalty is when you care for yourself and you do care for others in your life. And so God wants us to be loyal people. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 13 and verse number 22. Let's read that together. When he had removed, that's talking about King Saul. When God removed King Saul, he raised up unto Israel David to be their king. To whom God gave a testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after. Let's read that again. A man after. God is saying, that guy is like me. His heart is like mine and he will fulfill all my will. Many times there are questions that we ask. Why did God choose David instead of his seven brothers? Why did God select him instead of others? The answer is in the scripture. Because David was a loyal guy. God saw loyalty in his life. Hallelujah. He was, his character was not a 10 out of 10. Come on. Ladies couldn't bathe near the palace where he was. I mean, he was a wicked chap. He did a lot of things that were totally wrong. If he lived in today's church, I think we would have told him, brother, you can't come to our church. Sorry, brother David. We'll sing your songs, but you can't come to our church. Because our ladies are not safe here. I mean, sorry, brother. We love you, brother. But brother, don't come here. We would have put him under counselors. I'm sure in our church we won't allow uh, all these things. David wouldn't. But why did God love him? I mean we would allow David after corrective measures. The point is this. He had a loyal heart. God said I know he doesn't understand trigonometry or arithmetics. He is not a high IQ. I know he will never pass civil services. I know those things. God says but I see his heart. He is a loyal chap. Hallelujah. Some experiences when he saw Goliath. Why did David get angry with Goliath? Yes, that's the perfect answer. Because David had a passion for God. And when Goliath insulted God, David got angry. David said, me and God are one company. How can you talk against my partner? My senior partner, God, he got he told everyone in Israel, what are you guys waiting for? Attack! They said, hey, put your head down. He is Goliath. David said, so what? David got angry. David said, how dare that fellow insult the God to whom I am loyal? Somebody said, if you marry him, you get a booty, you get a reward. You get the king's daughter. No man can stay Focused after hearing that. I mean, even if you don't like the girl, look at the perks. Package is good, no? At least for the sake of the dowry, you want to marry the king's daughter and kill this Goliath. But David was not distracted even with that. One man understood it. What about the others? Where are you all? Wake up. I did the same thing, bro. When I read that passage, I was like, oh, man, this is, this is not a human. This is an alien. David is an alien. I mean, how could he not have paid attention to that statement? Of course, he paid attention, but he stayed focused. And he told Goliath, I'm killing you because you come against me insulting God. That's why there is a fatwa on you. Death warrant. That's precisely what happened. He wanted to honor God. It was not because Goliath and his family had any problems or, you know, nothing like that. Goliath took money, didn't give back. Now in the name of God, you are going to say, it. no, nothing like that. It, they, were, they had no personal pathological allergies, nothing. It was a pure problem of God's honor. He wanted to honor God. And God saw the loyal heart. 
Another time when David went to fight Goliath, King Saul called him and said, take my armament and go, my shield, my sword, my breastplate and all that. David wore the whole thing and said, excuse me, King, take it back. Because you know what? I'm not used to this. I'm used to a God who gives me victory by the anointing he has on my life. Again and again, he wanted to honor God. Look at, look at the fight between him and King Saul. King Saul wanted to kill David so many times. But David could have killed King Saul on the first day. I mean, think about it. David is sitting and playing the harp and King Saul takes the javelin and throws it at David. And David saw the javelin coming. And he ducks. He dodges. And the, and the spear was so strong and so fast, it went and stuck on the wall. David could have always pulled it out and said, Terike? You didn't see the replay in the news, how I killed Goliath. What do you thought, huh? David didn't do that. David was loyal. He said, I'm not only loyal to God, but I'll be loyal to God's people. And what did he do? Every time King Saul threw the spear, he ducked. Hallelujah. He dodged, he ran away. So many times King Saul came into David's hand to be killed. But David said, I will not kill you. One time he came to kill David and he was sleeping in the battleground. Who? King Saul. He's sleeping. David went, took his spear, took his uh, jug, water jug and ran off. Went on the other mountain. And David's people said to David, what's wrong with you, Anna? Are yaar. Give us that spear. We'll go kill him. Half our running is because of this Saul. Why are you so loyal to God in protecting Saul? Kill him, no. David said, you guys don't understand the principle. You can't be loyal to God without being loyal to God's people. Yes, the guy is wrong. And we need to stay away from him. We got to be wise. All right? We can't think he's loyal to us. But we shouldn't attack him. Let God take care of him. Palestines, when we see them, we'll finish them. But this fellow, when we see him, we'll run away. Don't attack. Because he also comes saying, hallelujah. So just keep away. I always say, don't talk bad about other people if they are God's children. Just avoid the guys you don't like. Now don't avoid me, okay? I'm a good guy. <laughs> then what happened? David, he went to the mountain and he shouted, the next hill. He goes up and he shouts, King Saul, wake up. Uh, 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 uh. It's morning. The roosters are crowing. Get up. King Saul wakes up. David says, it's me, David. Slept well. Abner, Saul's army men all get up. They all are like, David, how dare you? David shouts, hey, 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 calm down, guys. Where is King's spear and his coffee jug? Don't worry, it's with me. I picked it up. I came near you. I could have killed you. But I didn't touch you. Because you are anointed by the Lord. What was David saying? I'm going to keep a loyal heart. Even when others don't have a loyal heart. And let God take care of you guys. A loyal spirit. I want to encourage all of us. Loyalty doesn't mean getting killed by Saul. That's not loyalty. That is foolishness. Run away from people who are dangerous, but stay loyal that you don't hurt those who come in God's name, but you are loyal to God Almighty. That is what is required. Look at David's life. He did not attack all these guys. Finally, I want to conclude with David's life on this note. When he was standing with uh, this thought in his mind of taking Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Now, for those of you who know world news, you know what a problem Jerusalem is, no? Everyone is talking about Jerusalem. Who is the first one who took Jerusalem? Not Donald Trump. Not Netanyahu. The first one who took Jerusalem was David. David looked at Jerusalem in the book of Chronicles and he said, that should be the capital of Israel. Hamas was not there. PLO was not there. UNO was not there. A group of people called Jebusites were there. They are not there now. Okay, Jebusites are not there now. 
that whole clan was wiped out. Jebusites lived there and they were big people. They were, some Bible scholars say they were Nephilims or a group of aliens. So they lived there. So David planned and said, we're going to take that and make that the capital of Israel. You know what the Jebusites told? Jebusites replied to David saying, we heard you want to take our land as your capital. We will not fight you, man. You are chillere for us. You, know, you are, if we fight you, it will look bad on our bio data. Because you're too small for us. So we won't fight you. Our blind, our lame, our uh, weak people, they have a community. They have some soldiers. They will fight you. Lame soldiers will kill you. Da. We'll not fight you because you're too low for our standard. You'll find that in the book of Chronicles. But I love the scripture. You know what it says? After Jebusites told him this, the next word says, however, David captured Jerusalem. However, because even Bible writers don't know how that happened. They just say, however it happened. It happened. However, there are a lot of howevers that God is going to do in your life. Because you have a loyal heart to God Almighty. Hallelujah. A however. Our God is a God of the however. People are going to say, however they became successful. However they had the victory. Because God sees a loyal heart. A loyal heart. Let's close our eyes and say, God, I want to be loyal towards you, Master. I want to be a loyal person. This world is so full of deception, but I want to be the salt on the earth and the light in the world. I don't want to be another deception. I don't want to be another manipulation. I want to be loyal. I want to be loyal to you. I want to be a loyal person. As an individual, I want to be truthful and loyal. Help me, Lord, that my loyalty will be married to wisdom. That my sincerity will be married to discernment and understanding. That I'll not be foolish. That I will not expect people, I will not expect people to be loyal to me. I will be loyal to God, you, and to the people around me. But I'll expect only your loyalty. I'll not expect people to be loyal to me. I'll be wise, full of your discernment. Walking in faith, knowing that people can be wrong, but yet I want to be right. Give me that grace, Lord. Come on, shall we all pray for a few minutes saying, God, I'm sorry that I counted on people when I should have counted on you. I'm sorry, Lord. I want to count on you. I, want, I don't want to be bitter with people. It's just that, just as I am loyal to others, I'll not expect loyalty from others. I'll be careful but I'll be loyal. I'll be wise and I'll be loyal. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for you are with me. So many of us who were loyal to God and sometimes to people and people hurt you back, you didn't get back in appropriation, you got back in a wrong way and you feel that your life has been cheated, I want you to know God is able to make up for you. God is able to change the trajectory of your life. God is able to fulfill his plan in your life. His hand is on your life. He is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Israel lost Jerusalem many times. But today we are seeing around the world how against all odds God has given Jerusalem back to Israel because God is a faithful God. God is a loyal God. When God says something, he will watch over his word. And that's the same about you and me. God has a plan for us. He will watch over his word. Let's say to God, Father, along with my faith, along with my worship for you, along with the concept of giving to you, along with the concept of loving you, I want to have foundationally the concept of being loyal to you, of honoring you in my life, Master. Hallelujah. Give me that loyal spirit. Let that be the nature of my life. And let that loyalty be mixed well with wisdom, with strategy, with understanding, with discernment. When I come to you, I know your loyalty and I trust you blindly. But when I go to people, I'll be loyal to them. But help me not to trust them. I'll trust you, Lord. And when it comes to people, give me the spirit of discernment. Give me the spirit of understanding so that I will be loyal to them. 
but I'll not expect that level of genuineness or integrity but I know that people can sometimes be wrong so help me to calculate my life right come on start praying for some time in your college among your colleagues at work in the neighborhood in your family you are called to be a loyal person and yet wise with the wisdom of God wise with the understanding of God when you turn loyal to God and you don't see immediate results you don't have to be upset because there is a season for fruitfulness there is a season for results and at the right time God will lift you up no one can insult you you may have made mistakes but God will never let you down he's a faithful God he's the God of David he's looking at your heart and he says I can see your heart I know you're a genuine person this morning God's healing is here his mighty power is flowing in this place if you are a person with disabilities or some kind of a struggle I want you to trust God this morning because his healing power flows over here hallelujah your God is a healing God he is there in your future in the problem you may feel you are alone no the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego a God who is everywhere is also there in the midst of your problem and when he sees your loyalty he will reveal his glory there hallelujah tell him Lord I trust you today I trust you today help me to use all my strength and you are my strength oh God you are my help oh God help me not to push against the odds just with myself but let me push with your grace with your strength with your anointing and I know every mountain shall be removed I know your faithfulness is on me I love you Jesus hallelujah 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 let's all pray for a few minutes speak out God's word over your life speak out God's blessing over your life hallelujah speak out God's favor on your life I tell you my brother your company can sometimes ignore your loyalty even your own family can sometimes despise your loyalty but God will never he will never insult your loyalty he will make up he's a faithful God he will pay back because he is not a creditor to anybody God will never be in debt to anybody he is a God who will return a hundredfold shaken together overflowing because that's the nature of God shall we lift our hands for a minute and say Lord I receive your word in my life I receive a heart of loyalty I'm not going to allow deception in my life I will be loyal to you master Heavenly Father even as we put our hands down and our hearts lifted up to you we say thank you thank you for your word some of us that have been hurt in life because we trusted people we trusted organizations and things didn't work out and we feel we can't be loyal to anybody anymore but give us a heart that is so loyal to you and to your word and give us a spirit which stays loyal even to people that are difficult that are sometimes not worthy of loyalty help us to stay loyal and give us wisdom not to expect back what we give to them but to expect correctly to expect only what we know we should expect Oh God, help us to calculate our lives in the wisdom of your scripture. I speak your blessing upon everybody here. Thank you, Lord, for giving such a blessed church that I could be a servant of, that I could serve and minister to. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May your blessing be upon each of them that they will grow in your favor. They will grow in your grace. They will grow in your anointing and they will never be put to shame. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' name we pray and the people shout it. Amen. Let's give God a big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand as we're going to pray and close. We'll sing that song, uh, uh, Old Beautiful Hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. As the ushers will pass out the bags, if you want to give to God, this is your time to give. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. And 
everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what a needless pain we bear. All because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. Trouble anywhere, we should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Father, this beautiful morning, we want to say thank you again and again and again for you are a good God. You will appear in the flames of fire to rescue us. You will shut the mouth of lions to prove your grace. Help us, Lord, to be loyal to you without counting the cost, without caring about whatever happens, to just be loyal to you even if we have to lay down our lives. Father God, give us that spirit. And with people, help us to be loyal to them, but never count on what may come back. Never count on anyone's loyalty, but to be wise. And if people are loyal to us, we would appreciate it. And if they are not loyal to us, we'll still continue to be faithful as your word teaches us. Help us, Lord, to have our loyalty. Anointed with wisdom, so that we are not caught off guards, so that we are not foolish, so that we will be wise, strategic, and walk in excellence. Help us that our loyalty will not lead us into wrong commitments, into foolishness, into failure, 
but that through the nature of loyalty we will build up into excellence into victory into a character that you will honor thank you master we love you today may your name be glorified thank you for speaking to us lord bless your children that every one standing here walk in your victory walk in your provision walk in your favor bless the offerings lord as people have given you out of their loyalty out of their love out of their respect for you may your blessing rest on their life prosper them in jesus name we pray and the people said amen the grace of our lord jesus the love of our heavenly father and the sweet abiding presence and communion of the holy spirit rest upon each one of us from now and forevermore amen god bless you all have a blessed week ahead bye bye this program is made possible by your faithful financial support join us along with the thousands hearing god's word if you are in bangalore Please join us at Bethel AG Church International Worship Center, number 67 Ring Road, Hebal, Bangalore 24. Or visit us online at www.bethelag.in. Thank you for watching.